I'm Nicole Compton, right now on Deadbeat. It's a case of he said, she said, with a seven-year-old boy caught in the middle. All I want you to do is pay your child support. We'll talk to both sides of a child support case that's found its way to criminal court. Plus, a man standing on his last legal leg gets one more chance from the judge. We haven't had that happen, so th this is the last chance. Real people, real child support cases, and real justice. I'm Nicole Compton in Courts in Session here on Deadbeat. I'm Nicole Compton, here on Deadbeat TV, the show that takes you inside of Jefferson County Criminal Child Support Court. When parents fall too far behind on payments aimed at supporting their children, they end up here, in front of a judge, with two options. Either they get back in line or they go to jail. And with me is the newest member of our Deadbeat TV team, attorney and legal expert Oliver Barber. Oliver, child support and not paying it can be a serious crime. Absolutely. Uh, the child support laws say that you can go to jail, you can go to jail for a long time. It's a crime against the children. It's a crime against all of us because if we don't pay our child support, then we have to support them. Right, so it's a crime against public and taxpayers as well. Absolutely. Serious issue. Our first case today is that of Donovan Miles. We've seen him before and his ex in this court. Mr. Mouse has two kids, and apparently he's up to date with the child support for his daughter. But his son has a different mother, and apparently it's a different story with her. Our own Ashley Anderson caught up with mom outside the courtroom just before the last hearing on her case against Mr. Donovan Mouse. I'm with Ashley Smith, and you're here in court again for child support. Now, what's been going on with your ex? Has he been telling the truth in court? Um, I mean, he's telling the truth about his daughter's child support. It's paid for, but his son is like behind for some reason because his mommy and daddy pays his daughter's child support for him. And you have the one son with him? Yes. Yeah. And how long have you been coming in and out of court to take care of this? Since my son was like two, two or three, and he's about to be seven. And has Donovan ever been put in jail for this? Um, no, not yet. Is he on the way to that? Hopefully today. I mean, I need to do something. Do you think that jail will make him start paying? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going to scare him yet to pay his child support, so hopefully jail needs to start paying it. I don't know. Is he in your son's life? Mm, barely. He's supposed to get him every other weekend. but. And so when you see him in court, do you all actually interact? What's that relationship like? Um, we're friendly here and there, but other than that, no. I don't like to talk to him that much. Thanks, Ashley. Let's see if the court can come up with a solution to all of this. Let's listen in as Judge Sean Delahanty takes up the case of Donovan Miles once again. All right, now you're supposed to be paying, it looks like $75 a week in child support. And he's made, uh, looks like, you know, well, do you have a job? Yeah, I work here, that's what I'm supposed to be at right now. All right. Where are you working? Quality Inn over on Barstown Road. Okay. And um, is there a wage assignment? Yeah, it's coming. I got the paperwork and everything where it shows that the postman was supposed to take, the, take out the full amount, but I guess they said it was supposed to be some kind of law or something. I don't Hang know. on a second. I don't know what it is. Uh, do you have just this one uh, pay order? Do you have different sets of kids or just yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I got two pay orders. I got the, remember you told me to bring back the stuff for my daughter? Uh-huh. So I brought the stuff back. I got the documentation. Did you want to see okay. it? Okay. And, uh, Okay. And then I bought my check stubs too, so because you said bring that too. All right. Um, how much money are they taking out of your check? Uh, I think it was like seventy nine. Okay. And so then it's being divided. Correct. Okay. Well, see, the thing of it is, though, I pay like I don't. They, I, it was, I was hoping they would just take out his out of this check, and then I go down and pay my daughter's by myself. Well. So that's the reason, you know, because I didn't want it to fluctuate like that. Okay. All I want you to do is pay your child support. Yes, and I sir. want you to put forth your best effort. Yes, sir. I'd like for you to stay out of the penitentiary. Yes, sir. And I'm not all that eager just to send you back to the penitentiary, but it's very important that you hang on to this job and that you in this this wage assignment. I think they're taking all of the money out of his check that, that the, they can. That the pay. federal law allows. Right. That's right. why I don't understand how how they can try to 
require our people to pay more than even the federal law allows them to pay. Well, what they may want to, you know, well, it's, a, it's all about, you know, leverage. Uh, maybe they are thinking that uh, they want them to get a second job. I don't really know. Uh, and part of it is uh, we need to have. Let's see. I'm in drug court, too, so I wouldn't even be able to work a second job. See, and this is, I recall that having this conversation before with you that you were in drug court and yes, this is conviction and why he went to the penitentiary was drugs and you know, he's still not, he's coping better now with his whole drug lifestyle, buying and selling drugs and using drugs and whatnot. He's doing better. And he's up against the wall, right? I mean, the, in drug court, he either stops using, do, using drugs or he goes to the penitentiary or jail, right? Yes. So he's got that. And then he's got this case. And then we want to talk about sending him back to the penitentiary for not paying his child support when it looks like this is as good as he's, you know, and this may be uh, uh, at this point in time his highest and best use, which means we don't know that we could get him, a, he could get a better job than what he has now, and therefore he will never be able to pay the total amount of this child support. Mm -hmm. And I'm not for sending this over to the grand jury. I appreciate that, Judge. Provided that you hang on to this job and you take this serious, that you're not, you know, so you're with this drug court. Yes, sir. You're giving up the life of drugs and the drug uh, sales and use and everything. Yes, sir. And that uh, you want to live free here and you want to uh, provide for your children as best you can. Yes, sir. Uh, and you need to make sure you keep coming back to court. It's Mr. Uh, Miles' responsibility to pay child support for these two cases. Can he possibly do that? Let's be realistic about this and our expectations for Mr. Miles. And let's have a sensible pro approach uh, to solving this problem or coming as close as we can to solving this problem long term, as opposed to, you know. So come. your honor is gonna be willing to work with us on that sensible approach, because if the court works on the sensible approach of Mr. Miles, he intends to work. Oftentimes, the county attorney's policies don't seem to work towards that, and I have a problem with that. But if the I'm court not, can work toward that with we'll, us. We'll, we'll bring the county attorney around. Okay. But it's very important <laughs> for you to hang on to that job. Yes, sir. Right? Very important that you hang on to that job. Yes, sir. And uh, do you have a decent relationship with Miss Smith? I thought I had a conversation with Miss Smith before. Yeah, she, you were, we're working on it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, <laughs> she's going to be happier about you if you'll pay your child support. She should be a little bit happy that you got this job and that she is now getting some, uh, some child support. Yeah, she's. Because we had a conversation ungrateful. before, Miss Seeler, and the point was, like a year ago, the chance of uh, uh, her receiving child support was like right next to zero. So now he's making changes in his life, and, uh, and we may need to take some small steps to get bigger steps. And hang on to that job. And uh, we'll get Mr. Miller coached up a little bit, and we will uh, be able to talk about this sort of, as they say, uh, universally. Donna. All right? Yes, sir. All Donna, right. See you then. Our own Ashley Anderson had a chance to talk to Mr. Mouse just after the proceeding. Let's see how that went. Did this go as you were planning today? Uh, it didn't go as planned, but, uh, I mean, everything's going as fine as should go so uh, I guess I'll just wait to the tenth and see what happens. And so you've been making payments for your daughter, is that correct? Correct, full payments. And so it's the issues with paying for your son, that's yes. what's the issue? Yes ma'am. So how is it that you've been able to pay for your daughter but what's the issue with paying for your son? How come it's been difficult for one child and not the other? Um, at the time I was just working one job, like he said, it's, it's you know, they got me paying so much that you know I can't Money. I mean, I don't know where they want me to get the money from. So, uh, I, you know, I try to focus on one, get one taken care of, and take care of the other. So. Well, do you have custody of your daughter? Yeah, she stays at home in my house. Okay, and so do you see your son very often then? Yeah, every other weekend. Every other weekend? Okay. Yeah. So the plan now is just to hold on to that job, and if you don't, what does that mean for you? Well, actually, I'm going to hold on to the job, and then I'm going to go for joint custody, so then this would be, you know, irrelevant. And if you come back and there's no job, does that mean jail time? What happens? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's jail time, but uh, I'll definitely have a job. All right. I don't we'll know if it'll be the same job, but I will have a job. All right. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. With me is attorney and legal expert Oliver Barber. Oliver, this is a situation where there's a lot of he said, she said, people aren't getting along. What would you give advice to your clients about in this situation? 
They need to understand that the he said, she, she said will not work. They need to, under, they need to figure out the, the problem of control. Who is trying to control? What can they do to re remove that from the equation? And it's best for the kids if the parents can get along. Even in a non-support or child support situation, if they could come up to some agreement, it works out better for everyone. You're absolutely right, because people think that the punishment that's meted out by court, jail, is really bad. But it's the punishment of this, he said, he said, she said, that creates a bigger problem for the kids. I totally agree. Next on Deadbeat, we head to court with Judge Erica Lee Williams for the case of a man who was on his last legal leg. So th this is the last chance. Plus, how time in jail can add up to big problems with child support. Now, jail will interfere with your life. That's just a fact. Judge Delahanty takes on the case of the man who's fallen years behind. Still ahead on Deadbeat. I'm Nicole Compton, here on Deadbeat. This is the show that takes you inside real Jefferson County courts. We focus on criminal non-support cases, cases where parents are so far behind, it's become a criminal matter. Right now, we go to court with Judge Erica Lee Williams for the case of Jesse Gaines. After falling too far behind on his payments, the judge has given him two choices, pay up or get locked up. Let's listen in. Your Honor, this is my first appearance on the case. He's been here on his own the last two times. Okay. If we could push this out to October, he's supposed to make $100 a week. He's just retained employment. I think he will be able to do that. Okay. And then hopefully that day we can settle the case. Where are you working? On uh, all team staffing. I can't hear you. All team staffing. All time staffing? All team staffing. Has he been making the $100 payments? You know, your Honor, he made two fifty dollars and a forty dollar payment. That's basically as much as he could afford at that time. I've told him that it's been ordered at a hundred. That's what he has to make, and if not, then there'll probably be some issues at our next court date. He's hoping that this position every day it's temporary. He comes every day, reports, and they put him to work where he can. Hope, hoping that one of those positions will turn into a right. So here's the problem, right? We've been talking about this since July. And I don't see that we've been, you know, consistent. And I understand what you're saying. However, here's what you need to understand. You have to pay $100. I'm not passing this again with an extension for you to continue to get back on track, okay? Ms. Funk is here today, and that is great. And it sounds like you have employment. There's a note on here from before that he had employment, okay? And we're still not consistent with our payment. So that has to happen starting today. The last time this case was passed, it was passed until today. And it was if you made the $100 payments, then it would be amended. We haven't had that happen. So that this is the last chance. So on the next court date, what I'm going to do is review your payment history, and it needs to reflect that you've been making $100 a week, because that's what you're ordered to do. If you're not doing that, then we're going to have to have is it set for a hearing on that date, if he doesn't? A hearing, or yes, Mr. Mayor. Or a waiver. OK. So you're either going out that door or this one, all right? Thank OK? You. You've been advised. Thank you. I'm here with attorney and legal expert, Oliver Barber. Oliver, I know that when I have my clients, I tell them, make sure that you pay at least something. Criminal court is a little bit different. What do you tell your clients? You have to tell them the same thing. But you also need to analyze the situation. I'm impressed with the fact that he's been paying as he goes along. I'm impressed with the fact that the judge understands that. What he needs to do is analyze whether or not he can make these payments at the level that it's set. So, he needs to get counsel, or go to the uh, county attorney's office and make a motion to make the payments commensurate with what he makes every day. Well, in non-support criminal court, the judges will tell you, make timely weekly payments of a certain amount. Have you advised your clients or taken your clients back to court to see if that plea, uh, plea agreement amount can be lessened? Absolutely. If you go to the court and seek, seek the court's advice, you're going, you can't go wrong. All they can say is no. And they might say yes. They just might. There's much more ahead on Deadbeat. Next, see how a guilty plea is just the beginning of a child support case. So we got five more years of child support that you've got to pay. Plus, catch up or get locked up. 
Judge Erica Lee Williams delivers another serious threat. What you don't want to do is come back before me in March and then say you've had these issues, because at that time, it's not going to go well. I'm Nicole Compton on Deadbeat, the show that takes you inside Kentuckiana's child support court. Next on the docket, the case of LaShawn Thompson. He has a 13-year-old girl, but he hasn't sent any money her way for years. His excuse? Well, he spent some time in prison. But now, Judge Sean Delahanty is ready to get him back on track. Let's go inside the courtroom. All right, Mr. Thompson, you're on the docket today. You're uh, charged with felony criminal non-support, and apparently you posted a $5,000 bond. Uh, you're required to pay $400 a month in child support. Now, uh, you made one uh, $100 payment in 2011. Judge, he's been in, in prison for a while. All right. And when did you get out of prison? When did you get out of prison? Just, uh, when did you get out of prison? I've been in and out probably for the last couple of years. I got, got that out. part. When was the last time? When did you get out the last uh, time? Like sometime in 2000, end of 2010. So you've been out since 2010? Back and forth. Okay, hang on. But in jail. In let's, judge, let's not make any more statements, yeah. LaShawn. All I want to know is, have you been in prison since 2010? No. No. But you've yeah. been in jail a few times? Yes. Okay. Now, jail will interfere with your life. That's just a fact, right? right? So uh, we need to figure out some way where you can pay this child support or you're going to have to go to jail. Maybe we send you off to prison for not paying your child support. How old are your children with um, Monika Smith? She's 13. All right. So we've got five more years of child support that you've got to pay, right? Yes, sir. And you've not been, uh, looks like in 2008 you were pretty good paying your child support. Not great, but since that time, not, not at all. Yes, sir. Right. And you got to know, and uh, Mr. McCall will tell you, and if, if, it get, if it comes to it, there'll be 20 or 30 guys over in the jail that will tell you, yes, you're going to have to pay your child support. You've got to live in here with the rest of us, 20 or 30 guys. They're in there not paying their child support because they can't figure out that they've got to pay their child support. Right. Now, I want to show you something. This is a document. This is an accounting uh, of your child support case, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it's a certified record got this uh, stamp on it here. It says that this is a, an official record, so it's a piece of evidence. What it's supposed to show is the last 16 child support payments that you've made. Correct. Right. I need to see that the child support payments are coming in just right as rain or you got to go to jail. Right. Good. Then stay in touch with your lawyer. All right, we'll see you then. Oliver Barber, attorney and legal expert, Prison definitely has an effect on how you pay your child support. Yeah, it'll put a crimp in your pocketbook, but this guy's got more problem than that. If he's standing in front of the judge and his lawyer tells him not to answer the judge's questions, then he's going to be in worse trouble than he was when he walked in the courtroom. So he's got to figure out some way to make the judge happy, speak to the judge, answer the judge, and get the job done. Coming up next, what will it take to get this man caught up on a $2,500 debt to his kid? Judge Erica Lee Williams, she has some ideas. But I'm telling you, if you wait till March 9th, it won't go well. That case, when Deadbeat returns. I'm Nicole Compton, back with you on Deadbeat, the show that exposes the multi-million dollar problem of child support here in Kentuckiana. It's a problem so big, there are more than 60,000 active cases in Jefferson County alone. Many of these cases are so serious that the deadbeats have ended up in criminal court, and some even in jail. It's a fate Vernon Hughes is trying to avoid, but he's right on the brink of heading to the clink. Let's see what happens as he goes in front of Judge Erica Lee Williams. He's present and he's been making his payments. Um, they would like to see a lump sum payment or in lieu of that, a higher weekly payment. So okay. we're agreeing to do that, extend it for six months so he can comply with that. Okay, so it's asking for a lump sum of $2,500, but then there's a note that means anything over and above the timely weekly payment. So you can either do that each time or at one time. Does that make sense to you? So you're supposed to be paying, is it $300? He'll a month? Pay an extra hundred. He's paying seventy a week. Okay. Right now, so he can either pay hundred and seventy each week for the twenty-four weeks. Okay. 
or he, if he can somehow come up with the lump sum, pay that. Okay. Does that make sense to you on what your options are? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So you need to make sure that that happens because we're going to come back for that review. And so I'll be looking not only for your timely weekly payments, but also that $2,500 in whatever format it comes in, either overages every week or at one time you've made a $2,500 payment. Okay. If you're compliant. Um, it's amended to a misdemeanor right. and we'll enter a plea on that day. Right. And if not, we'll probably be having a hearing or something. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. If something happens and you're finding that you're not able to comply with this, you need to contact Ms. Lerner ASAP so she can put this back on the docket because you, what you don't want to do is come back before me in March and then say you've had these issues because at that time it's not going to go well. If something happens and you see that this is not going as you expected or what I'm asking of you, then you need to let Ms. Lerner know so she can come and talk with me and we can see if there's anything at all to be done. may not be anything, but I'm telling you if you wait till March 9th, it won't go well unless you're compliant. Does that make sense? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Anything else, Ms. Lerner? That's it. All right, thank you. Oliver, timely weekly payments are good, but you cannot have that amount of arrears just sitting there forever. That's absolutely right, but he's got to make a move somehow, a second job, borrow some money from somebody, find somebody he can do some extra work for, anything like that to start whittling it down just a little bit at a time. If he pays $10 a week, I bet it'll make this judge much happier. And if you take care of your arrears, it kind of helps with the criminal part of the case. It will definitely help with the criminal part of the case it goes because away. it'll go away. <laughs> right. But we're not going away. If you're having trouble collecting from your deadbeat ex or you have a non-support criminal case, we'd love to hear your story and your situation. Hit us up on Facebook. Tell us your story. We read each and every one of them. For Oliver Barber, I'm attorney Nicole Compton, and this has been another episode of Deadbeat.